everybody, this is Brie. Welcome to my kitchen. Today I want to talk to you about meal planning. I have the simplest way to meal plan of anyone I've ever seen. Um, so this may just be the meal plan for people who hate meal plans, who are overwhelmed by meal plans, who think that making a meal plan locks them into eating a certain food on a certain day um, and not being able to switch it around or be flexible. This is not that meal plan. This is extremely flexible. This is a meal plan you can adjust to work for your life, your family, in the sense that y'all may like all different kinds of things that I like. You may have different kinds of timing than me. You have, may have a different level of business in your schedule. And that's what's so great about this meal plan is it's completely and totally adjustable to your needs. Often the things that we do for our families that we think go unnoticed or are the simplest of jobs turns out to be the bedrock of comfort and security that we provide for our families. This security is this in love is something that maybe they feel and they experience it, but they don't necessarily recognize it. Meals tend to be one of these foundational things that we do for our families that can bring us a lot of stress. The really great thing about feeding our families though is that it does not have to be complicated. It can be very simple. The lovely thing about feeding our families is that it doesn't have to be elaborate, complicated, or expensive. Really what it's about is consistency and creating a culture in our homes of eating together, being, being together, joining together, and just having this culture around the dinner table. One of the things I'm really passionate about is trying to encourage people to serve their families with joy. So in all of these mundane, repetitive, and often thinkless tasks, I think it's really good for us if we're struggling finding the joy in a task or even that task like isn't neutral, like we just really despise it, is figuring out how to find joy in that task. How to change something about it so that it's not so stressful, it's not such a burden. And sometimes that can be just changing our mentality around it, but other times there's like practical solutions that we can actually change in order to bring much more joy to that task, whether it's bringing more creativity into it or becoming more organized in that area. And honestly, in my experience, the hard work of mothering and running a home tends to be learning those skills more than learning the skill of actually doing the thing. But it's learning how to do the thing in a way that I enjoy, um, that brings me joy, or just neutralizes the thing to where I can get it done though without being frustrated and overwhelmed and, and become a martyr, you know what I mean? Because a really awesome thing is that we have the authority in our homes and we have the authority over ourselves to figure out what we need to be happy and to bring that happiness and joy and peace into our homes. I've been a mother for 14 years now, I have seven children, and I know that one of the most stressful parts of my day for many years was making dinner. There's various reasons for that. When I had all little children, it was because there was no one to help watch them while I made that dinner. So there was just a lot of fussing and screaming and whining and, and there was no one to help me during that time. But also, coming up with a meal every single day or multiple meals, every single day for my family that were new, that everyone would eat, that was extremely overwhelming to me. And that's whenever I discovered meal planning. Now, a lot of meal planning out there didn't work for me. I didn't want lists of other people's meals that they ate. I also didn't want documents that I needed to print out. Um, I didn't want all these extra steps to creating my own meal plan. I really just honestly needed some encouragement and someone just to show me real quick how to do this. Once again, I found that the harder work wasn't figuring out the meals, but it was figuring out a system of meal planning that actually worked for me. But let me tell you it's worth it. It is worth it to figure these things out because once we do, doing these tasks that were so difficult before, whether mentally or physically, became so much easier and really freed me up. So first let's get into a few of the perks of meal planning. Obviously we just discussed one, which is that you don't have to figure out the meal you're gonna make at four o'clock in the afternoon and be super stressed about it. Um, you can already know ahead of time what you're making. Another perk would be that you can have your meats out and ready to thaw and that way you're never at four or five o'clock in the afternoon being like, oh no, I don't have meat to cook because I didn't get it out to thaw. You would have already done that because you've done your meal plan that week. With meal planning, you are definitely gonna save money, and the reason for that is most likely you're gonna shop your pantry first. You're not gonna go to the grocery store, pick up a whole bunch of stuff, and then come home and figure out if you can make meals with it. You're gonna shop your pantry, you're gonna to try to make meals out of what you already have, and then if you need to, you'll make a list, go to the grocery store, and buy just the few items you need to fill in the holes of your meal plan for that week. 
it saves a lot of money. And I actually believe that you will get to the point where you keep on hand enough for five or 10 different meals in your pantries and freezers. It takes a little while to get there, but you will get there if you continue to look ahead at your family's needs. Honestly, it will just become the natural progression of your meal plan because you'll, you'll already have this rhythm and understanding of what you guys need every week, and you'll just have that on hand. It takes a little time, but you will get there. It will also save you money because you'll be able to look ahead and say, you know, Wednesday is the night of the week where we are super busy. We don't get home till six o'clock, but hey, I have time in the morning to throw something in the crock pot. So you will know that that particular meal you're gonna throw in the crock pot on Wednesday morning, or you know you're gonna set out a freezer meal before you leave so that when you get home, you can throw it in the oven. But if you don't think ahead like that, come that Wednesday, and you're driving home from whatever activity you've been at all day, and like, I don't have a plan for dinner. What are you gonna do? You're most likely gonna get fast food or get takeout or go out to dinner, and that's astronomically expensive compared to a homemade meal. So this is gonna save you time, it's gonna save you money, it's gonna save you stress. Now, I would just like to remind you that meals do not have to be elaborate. Of course, if you wanna make them elaborate, you go right ahead and do that if that gives you joy. If being extremely creative in the kitchen is something that gives you joy and you love doing that, then of course, do that. But if making meals is extremely stressful to you and you wanna simplify it as much as possible, then it's totally fine to keep it simple. And so one of the ways that I keep my meals very simple is I make a meat, a vegetable, and a starch. And a lot of times those things are not, I don't fix them elaborately, I just cook them right and do a little bit of seasoning on them or herbs on them and really that's all you need to make a complete meal for your family. Also remember, you don't have to have 50 different meals on your meal plan in one month. You can decide what you can handle for your family and how many different meals you can handle having on the meal plan. Um, now my plan is actually only a one week. I only do one week at a time, but if you're someone that likes to do a month or two months or three months, maybe you will have 50 meals on that meal plan, but they don't all have to be different. You don't have to eat 50 different things. You know, one thing I tell my children all the time whenever they're like, no, that's not my favorite food. It's like, well, it's somebody else's and we don't always get to eat our favorite food, especially when we're in a group or in a family. You know, sometimes it's their favorite, sometimes it's their favorite, and sometimes it's everyone's favorite, which is always a very, very nice day. One thing I will do though is make sure there's always something that I know everybody likes, but it doesn't have to be every part of the meal being everyone's favorite. I even tell them, it's not like I get to eat my favorite things every day. <laughs> You know, because we're balancing things. We're balancing nutrition, we're balancing cost, we're ba balancing time, we're balancing our sanity. So remember that, you can make this work for you. Those were just a few tips and tricks I wanted to share with you really quick about meal planning and about how I approach meal planning and feeding my own family. Um, now I'm gonna get to the easiest part, which is the actual meal planning. If you already have a set of meals that you regularly make for your family, this is gonna be a lot easier for you than someone, say, who has no idea um, what they're gonna make for their family and they're always making something different. Um, it will still work for you if you do that, but I think you will find that you will narrow in on some of the things that are easier for you to cook and you're not always making new things. When I make a meal plan, the very first thing I do is I go to my fridge. I just, I just look in it. What do I have? So like right now, I've got some leftover pasta. I can incorporate that into some lunches this week. I've got some peppers that I know I bought these for snacks because I have children who just love raw peppers. I've got a cabbage and I've got some broccoli and some, bros and some Brussels sprouts. I have fruit for snacking, so I don't have to think about that. Eggs for breakfast and baking. I've got fruit for snacking. Usually I'm just gonna be looking in my fridge to look at which vegetables and fruits I have for snacking and then vegetables for sides for meals. I don't typically keep meat in my refrigerator because I buy meat usually in bulk or have grown it myself and killed like a whole cow or a whole pig and so I keep that on hand. Obviously though, if you buy meat little bits at a time, you are gonna to wanna to check your fridge and see what meat you have in there. The next thing I do is I check my freezer. And I see, okay, I have some bacon, I have some store-bought french fries, store-bought corn. I've got a freezer meal down there. I've got some chicken, frozen waffles. Okay, good, I, now I know I have some bread. I have some home, homemade ice cream. And when I see all that stuff, I know, okay, now I know that we can have ice cream one day this week. I know that 
I've got frozen chicken already in the freezer, so I don't need to buy any at the store. That's something I typically don't have a lot of on hand, especially like breasts and thighs and things like that. And it's good to know, oh, I have a bunch of chicken tenders in there that we need to eat and I can make that as one of our meals this week and those are so easy to cook. Typically then I'll walk down here and I'll see, check in my freezer just to like eyeball it. The only reason I do is I typically know exactly what is in these things. I don't keep a list but I just keep it in my head. But seeing it often gives me inspiration. So I'll just pop my head in there. We have some frozen store bought pasta that needs to be used up. We have plenty of roasts and lots of sausage. I'll look in my beef fridge and see, okay, I really only have ground beef right now and some beef cube steak. And so then I will look and see, do I have enough beef cube steak for a whole meal for my family? And if I do, I can just put that in my mind as, okay, we can have beef cube steak this week. Now, if you're someone that likes list, write all this stuff down as you do it. Then I'll take a look in my meal fridge and be like, okay, what do I have for pre-made meals? I know I have lasagnas and I have some pasta dishes. I've got lots of breakfast items. This whole process takes me maybe a minute usually because I just quickly scan it all. And often, even though I know what's in all these places, it refreshes my memory, puts my eyeballs on it, and gives me inspiration for what I'm gonna cook, but then it also shows me what I do not need to buy at the store. Now, I try to keep enough food on hand that I can make a couple of weeks worth of meals no matter what. I always have that much food on hand. Um, it, in the past, I've had even a whole year's worth to do that, but right now, I'm just at a few weeks. That really helps me though, not have to go to the grocery store if I really don't want to, or if I'm trying to save money. The last thing I'm gonna do is just check my pantry and see what else I have in here. So I know I have plenty of avocado oil and um, olive oil. I have lots of beans if I wanted to do a quick chili or quick tacos and burritos. I see I have plenty of stuff to make chicken tikka masala. I see I have plenty of stuff to make enchiladas, plenty of stuff to make pesto. Now, some people would say make your meal plan then check all of your stores. And to me, I do it the opposite because I feel like this way actually saves more money. Because you look and see what you already have and then you make your meal plan. When I'm explaining in this way and telling you how to do this, it seems like this is complicated and takes a lot of time. But really, very quickly, you'll get so used to looking at your stores that you'll just automatically know what's already in there. I know what meats I have, I know what starches I have, I know, um, because I saw in my pantry, I have flour, I have rice, I have oats, I saw in my freezers, I have frozen biscuits, I saw the vegetables that need to be used up before they go bad. So now, I make my meal plan from what I already have, and I can make a week's meal plan from all that stuff. I don't need to buy anything. All right, now here's the thing I do. I literally just make a list of meals. I don't assign them a day. I don't assign them anything. I just have them there. Because what happens to me a lot, or what used to happen to me a lot, is come dinner time, I would just go blank. And I wouldn't have anything prepared. So instead what I do is I just make a list of meals, and maybe each morning, I don't even usually have to do it every day, but maybe every day for a while until you get used to this, you just glance at it and think, what meat do I need to take out? Or what meal works best for today? That we have two days a week, we're re really busy. So I'm gonna eat one frozen meal. Now I know that we have two days a week where I need simple meals. One of them is a day that we have a potluck, but the thing is, is I'm gone that whole day and then we come home and then we shortly go to the potluck. So I need food already done. So that's gonna be a freezer meal day. I already know that. The second thing is that we have another busy day, and so I know that that's gonna be a really simple meal day. Nothing that takes a whole lot of time to cook or a whole lot of energy. So I keep that in mind when I decide which meals I'm going to make. The other reason having a list of meals for your meal plan is helpful is that if you have older children that help cook, you can just say, go pick something off the meal plan. Okay, and that's it. That just took me a few minutes and because I've done this so long, these are all things I can make without any sort of recipe. This I can do even if the meat was still frozen because I can cook it from frozen. A roast, I really do need to thaw if I'm gonna cook it the way I like. And the chicken I can cook from frozen too, so I don't have to stress about it if I forget. I think one of the skills of cooking this many meals for people is learning where you can, where you can be flexible, where you can finagle things, where you can cook meat from frozen, where you can't, things like that. 
Um, and I've just learned that over the years from making mistakes, <laughs> from not having meat thawed, from not having a meal. Um, now, I don't put seven meals on the meal plan, and the reason for that is on the weekends, things are a lot more relaxed. Often we'll have pizza one night, and we'll have popcorn and apples one night. And so since I know that about my family, I don't need to put seven meals down. Also, I don't plan breakfast and lunch, even though we are here most of the time for all three meals. For me, what I've done is um, I have done lots of freezer meals for breakfast because that is my hardest meal to make. But you could apply the same exact thing to breakfast and lunch if that, if that helps you. That's why this process of meal planning is so great is because it's just so incredibly flexible. And of course, what you could do is you could actually just literally have a list of every meal that you could possibly make from what you have in your house and that would give you a couple of weeks of meals maybe. The only time I stray from this outline is whenever I'm just feeling like making something new, like I wanna learn a new recipe, I'm bored with what I've been making, I wanna get creative, and I'll look up a new recipe and I'll add the ingredients to my um, grocery list, and then if we like that, I'll try to keep some of those on hand. Once again though, I really keep my meals super simple, so having on hand what I need for my meals is very easy. Typically, um, special birthday meals or Sometimes I just like to make something a little bit more gourmet because it's more fun for me. That kind of stuff is just something I'll go to the store for. I don't really keep that kind of stuff on hand most of the time. And that would be things like really nice goat cheese or um, certain cuts of meat that I don't have, just stuff like that. You know, very specific types of mushrooms or a very specific type of wine that would need to, you know, to make a sauce or something. That's the kind of stuff that I don't really keep stocked because it's just for very special occasions, which could just be, I want to make something new. <laughs> That's a special occasion too. Another thing you may notice about my meal plan is I don't write down every single side we're gonna have, mainly because I already know what we're gonna eat with it and I already know that we have that in my pantry. Um, so sausage and cabbage, I could be flexible here. I may make some bread to go with that or I may make rice. The frozen meal is pasta, so it has the carbs in it. Um, and I already know that I'll make a salad to go with that. If I feel like it, if it's a really busy day and I don't feel like it, we'll just eat it like that. Um, here I did write roast broccoli and potatoes because I do know that I wanna make sure I make potatoes on that day because I have some potatoes that need to be used. I always make rice with chicken tikka masala and then we'll have um, tortilla chips with our taco soup. And I could write that all down here, and if that's important to you to do, especially while you're figuring out your system and you don't just have it all in your head, go ahead and write down every single detail. But for me, I already know what I can use as sides or as the carb in the meal, and I don't really have to do that anymore. The point though is that you need to make it work for you, so if writing down every single part of the meal is the best thing for you to keep your mind clear, so that you're not stressing out, then you do that. If you can just write down the main part of the meal and you know, hey, I've got what I need to make a side with that, whatever it may be, then do it that way. The idea is that you just know what you're gonna be making whatever day of the week. Now you may notice on here that I did put a few desserts. This is honestly for my kids. My kids love to make desserts and so I will just throw a few ideas on there for them. So they're like, mommy, I wanna make something. I say, okay, well, I know that we have everything we need for those things right there. And if you wanna get creative and make something different, go for it, but those are some ideas. Lastly, all I do is I put this on my fridge and it's in front of me. I go into my refrigerator multiple times every day, so it's right in front of my face. I have to see it. It's const that way it's constantly in my mind and I can even pull it up whenever I'm not around it and be like, oh yeah, I remember, okay. Um, that's what we're having. I know a 15 minute video makes it seem like this is complicated, but it is not. Most weeks this takes me maximum 10 minutes, maximum. One more thing I wanted to show you is that there are certain things that I make that I know if I make them, I'm either gonna make broth soon or soup, even in the summer. For instance, anytime I make a roast, like a beef roast, I know for a fact we are gonna have taco soup a couple of days later. And the reason for that is that the way that I make roast makes such an incredible um, flavorful broth that I am going to be using that leftover gelatinous fat and broth like within the next few days to make this soup that I've made up from that over the years. So I just know that that's what we're gonna have 
Um, and you will get to that point too, where you'll know when you make this, you're gonna have this the next day or a couple days later as you have time to make it. I feel like meal planning even encourages that using up of leftovers and little bits and pieces from meals because over time you'll get really good at being efficient at being like oh i made a whole chicken maybe your family doesn't eat the whole chicken so the next day you're going to have chicken salad and then you know two or three days later you're going to have chicken soup or maybe you do eat the whole chicken and so you know that the next day or two days later you're going to have you're going to make broth for some sort of soup or to freeze or you're going to make chicken soup there's just little personal touches like that that you'll get really good at if you implement a meal plan. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this very simple video. I hope that in some way it encouraged you and showed you that mealtime does not have to be stressful and that you can figure out how to make cooking for your family work for you and a joyful experience, whether you meal plan or not. Find a way to take some of the stress off of you so that this can be a part of your day that even if it's not joy filled, it's at least neutral and not giving you a lot of crushing anxiety and frustration. Okay guys, thank you for joining me in this video and I hope you have a great day.